So let's talk um, for a few minutes here on how to use the job descriptions because that's the most important thing. The building of them is great, but if you don't implement and use them, then it just becomes this strategic exercise that has no value. So using of the job descriptions is essential to, um, to the success of your processes, really. So one of the ways to use them is to prioritize which processes to work on and who's doing what. So we talked about that. You can assign people to complete job descriptions um, and assign them processes to complete and over time document all of your processes. You can also use the job descriptions to prioritize what to document first, second, and third. So I could look at this organization chart and I can say, all right, well, I, we really, Q4 is coming up and we've got to hire this operations manager in Q4, so let's document these processes now. So we can be ready with the training to ensure this person's success. So that's one way, by priority. If you're looking at a tree like this one, so where you've got entry level, junior, senior, always start with the bottom one first. So document these processes first, then move up to here, then move up to here. This is just general kind of good protocol when it comes to document. You want to start with the simplest of things first, and then move up, and then move up. That would hold true for just a regular department like this one. Start with these two boxes first, document this tactical work, and then move up to this one. One of the results you get with the managerial positions is a lot of the managerial processes are linked to all the managerial positions. So when I go here to operations manager, performance review, written warnings, management philosophy, these things, when I document this, it's going to be done for every manager it's linked to, everyone who does a performance review. So you, when you're doing your managerial processes, if you have managers in place, it's a, it's a good team exercise. You get the library content, which is a great place to start, and then maybe once a week you could meet with your managers for an hour and sit and think, okay, how does this look to us? How do we want to do this? And document those managerial processes. The second way to use the job descriptions is as a management tool. So managers manage processes. That's what their primary accountability is. It's not to manage people, but it's to manage processes by which people get results. If managers think of themselves as managing people and their personalities and who does what good and who doesn't and all the difficulties, that's where manage, management becomes this big bear that all of us can't stand. It's a much cleaner, simpler, more effective um, result for your managers to consider that they manage processes and they teach the people to use those processes. It gives an ordinary amount of power to the manager or a feeling of control because they can use that process to make their employees better, to decide how well they're doing. Can they do it better? They can use it to empower the employees. So with that concept in mind, the job description becomes the most essential tool for a manager. The job description is a complete listing of all the processes that that position's accountable for. And if it's my role as a manager to manage with processes, then wouldn't this be the most amazing tool ever to have? Because I see this complete list of what each person's accountable for, and I can start to use it to help them. Once the processes are documented, it goes even further, because I can then say, this is not just what you do, but this is how you do it. Let's talk about this together. How can it be better? Um, what's missing here? So the conversation, the management conversation, becomes about process and about innovation um, and about effectiveness and about empowering people to do more and to do it better in a more efficient way. So this job description um, becomes the tool that, that managers will use um, for new employee training and ongoing training. It becomes the tool that is the central focus for every meeting. When I sit down and communicate with employees about what they're doing and how they're doing and how it could be better and how fabulous they are or how there's a, 
um, an issue in certain places. The job description is, is always what we're talking about. So for new employee training, the job description becomes the checklist for what they need to be trained on. I mean, it's as simple as that. And I'm going to show you when we get, get to the system of the week um, a, a tool we have in the library for that. So when you hire a new employee, you can take them through an onboarding process where they're given maybe an HR training um, on the employee handbook and they get their keys and they're explained the rules and the policies and all of that. That's not training. That's just new employee training. Then they get an on-the-job training, or we call it a job description training, where they're literally trained in each of these processes, one at a time. And they're taken through how you do it. Um, the manager teaches them with the process. So when I'm teaching someone how to generate referrals, it, you may start with, like, review these two work plans. Let's go through them and kind of look at the tasks and look at how this process works. Study it. Memorize the scripts. Um, watch the training video. Listen to the audio. So they're studying the process. And I may have decided that through my experience that it takes um, 10 hours for someone to learn how to generate referrals using our process. So I'll have them study this for a while. Then maybe I have them watch someone else do it, listen to someone else do it. Maybe we do some role plays. So using the content of the process, they're trained in how to generate referrals. And you go through every process one at a time, teaching the employee what their work is, basically. It may take a week to go through all this. It may take five months. It depends on what the position is. But you can't get away from this. The training is a necessity. And the documentation of the process makes it, um, makes it easier. Make, it, it's almost, it, I can't remember the statistic I heard the latest, but it's something like 75% more efficient or something. What that means is if you train someone with documentation, they're, they learn 75 times faster than if you teach them with no documentation. Also, hidden facts around that are the, the loss and the waste from lack of training and lack of documentation. So you can't even quantify to a certain degree how much inefficiency is occurring by this just watch me do it training um, by lost time, mistakes, issues with customers, whatever the situation is. So these job descriptions, again, new employee training. It's like a checklist. Check it off. Did this one? Did that one? Once the employee's trained, move on to the next one. Then ongoing training. So these job descriptions can be the, um, the, the point of all of the conversations for employees. So we have a process in the library for one-on-one -on -one meetings, which I think is a fabulous thing for employees. Even if you just do them once a month, I think once a week is great. But these one-on-one -on -one meetings are where a manager sits down with the employee and says, let's talk about how it's going. Um, they are a leader to the employee. They show them. They talk to them. How are you? How's your job going? How are things been happening? What do you think needs to be better? Then we go through and talk about their processes. You may make like a process of the month where you just sit down and talk about referrals. It's already documented. People are using it. Um, how could this be better? Let's just discuss it. Let's look at the documentation. If the employee is having an issue, like say they've been thoroughly trained in this referral process, their counterpart, the, their, another salesperson, is generating 10 referrals a week, and this employee is getting zero or maybe one. So these are the types of statistics which become valuable when you have a documented process. Because if I didn't have a documented referral process, I might just say to myself, well, that guy's just better, right? He just he can do it better. But when I do have a documented process, there's one person may be better than another, but the process itself, if done correctly, generates a certain result. So I can then, with, with uh, power, or conviction, say to the employee, you can be better. <laughs> Other people using the same process get 10 a week. What's wrong with the process here? How can we make it better for you? Let's look at it. Tell me what doesn't work for you. Tell me what's hard. Um, tell me what we can change. 
uh, to, to help you be more effective. I believe in you. So you notice the tone of my voice is not, what are you doing wrong? You're not as good as him. Um, you should get 10 a week. You, you know, you're not doing this correctly. What's wrong with you? You're always late. It's not you, 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 you're bad. It's what's wrong with the process here? How can we fix it? How can we make you better? So that's a, tech, a management technique that comes from having documented processes, but it's also um, very encouraging because the manager doesn't have to make it me against you or you're wrong. Because the minute I say that, the employee just shuts down. And then the excuses start coming up and the accusations, and then we're all in this you know, crazy um, personality battle. So use the job description as an ongoing management tool um, to reinforce processes, uh, to innovate processes when necessary, to communicate about what's working for the employee and what's not working for the employee. This will um, in, it promote this kind of process-driven management style, which is a beautiful thing. Um, it creates consistency in how managers manage because throughout the organization, everyone's doing it the same way and they get the same um, treatment. And then it's also going to reinforce the processes themselves because we're talking about the documentation all the time. So use the job descriptions. Number one, use them for prioritizing your process documentation, um, delegating process documentation, managing, managing the process documentation, and then use them for um, training, for management, new employee training, ongoing training. There's a tool that I want to show you here quickly in the library. Um, it's in the Guiding the Business Library. And it's right here. I've edited the title to make it position specific. Salesperson training. So you go to the library and you'll see the process. It's called new employee job training. So I go and download this process, put it into training. And now I've got a copy of this process from the library. Then the training for every position on your org chart is different because the processes are different. So you want to create this type of training process, which is the training of the job description, basically, for every position on the org chart. So here I've got sales, marketing, senior tech. So I go here to the title, and then I insert the position name. And then I save it. By editing the title, it, it helps me to then customize this for this position. But then also, it allows me to go back into the library and get that process again, so I can have the template again. Because the minute you edit the title of a library process, it becomes available in the library again, because Touchstone doesn't know that it, are, it doesn't already. So this is kind of a trick around the library. So I can get another copy of this and then kind of change it for, edit the title and change it for that position. So let's go to this one, because it's the example. So the template has a structure to it. And what you're going to do is basically take every process from the job description here and put it in as tasks, put them in as tasks. I even did little hyperlinks to them. But this is kind of the structure of the training. So think about what the total training time would be for department and company innovation. And you can look at the content of that process and decide what is involved in this. How long do you think it will take? The more you do the training, the more information you'll have about how long it takes. Um, then there's this section, which you can use or not use, just background and relevance. Explain the importance of innovation to the business culture. For referrals, explain um, how the business grows with referrals and how happy clients promote referrals. This may be in the content of the process itself, but you can kind of give a highlight for that. Then study time. How much time do you want them to study the process? Teaching. How are you going to teach it? So you use the documentation to teach. So you're going to go over the work plans. You're going to give examples. You may do a role play. You're going to have them fill out the forms. You're going to have them practice with it. They may watch someone else do it for a certain period of time. Good managers are good teachers. They learn how to teach. And you know what? In all the years I've been doing this, it's something I know is true. To teach something, you don't necessarily have to have spent 20 years doing that work. 
a good manager is an effective teacher. Teaching teachers can be more exciting and motivate and teach things well because they have the teaching techniques. So when you tell your managers, just go train this person, not only they don't really know how to teach it. So this kind of structure can give them some basics on how to teach. Have them think about it. What's the best way to learn this? Um, and then think about a test, if, if that makes sense for the process. How, how will you know if the employee has learned it or not? Um, think about how to test them on the tools in the process. Have them do a role play of the scripts. Have them fill out the form and show you how it's done. Have them recite to you how the process works. So go through this for every process on the job description that it makes sense for. This seems probably like a lot of work, but in the end, think about how valuable this is. It may take you for one position, you know, maybe four or five hours to sketch out a training like this. But imagine when you know it's right. So you sketch it out, you do it a couple times, um, it works. You can, number one, and this is one of the most valuable things I think small business owners could ever have, I know how much time it takes me to train someone. And I ultimately know how much money because I can put the money to the time. This is, this is huge because you know the time and money it's going to take you to scale your business. You know that if you let go of that employee that's been a thorn in your side and doing everything wrong for the last six years, you know that you can hire someone new someone more effective because he, he shouldn't have been hired in the first place. And it's going to cost you a certain amount of money. But you go in with confidence because you know that. So this type of training is, is useful to that degree because it helps you to scale your business and understand the financial consequences. Um, it significantly improves the training, obviously. I mean, anyone who would argue with that is crazy. This significantly improves the training. So it makes your uh, employees efficient, uh, faster, and for longer. It also helps you from making bad hiring decisions. Hopefully your recruiting and hiring has, has dealt with that to a certain degree. But once you get someone into a training like this, it's super obvious within the first couple days whether they're going to get it or not because they won't be able to do this right here, and they don't do it well. And you start to see issues come out with them that you may not have noticed in the hiring, and it comes out fast. If you do watch this person training, it could take you six months to figure out whether someone's working well or not. If you do it this way, you're going to see it right away. So this process is in the library um, under, the getting, under the guiding the business function. Another thing, there's many ways to do this in Touchstone. This is just one thing, one way. Here on the home screen, if you have control panels set up, you can have a manager go in, access the salesperson training. This is a checklist. So I just took the work plan and made it into a checklist. I go to this checklist. I put this person's name in. And then I can check off as I do this. So this is checking off the processes from the job description as I do it, and then save it. And now this is in, in Touchstone saved. So this is another way to do it. You can build a checklist and check it off as you go. Then anybody who has access to it can look and see that the salespeople have been trained, and they've been checked off as they've been trained. Another way to do it is you can go in here through management review, and you can literally just go one process at a time and put these little check marks. So if for whatever reason you don't want to do the how are you going to teach it and all of that, or maybe you do that but you, you know, don't want to use that checklist, you can do it here as well. So we're going to, as we get further and further into the trainings, we're going to talk more about the use of this. But the tracking of training and the completing of those checklists can all happen here in the control panel and in the management area. Next week, we are going to um, get into documenting processes, how to document well. So this is going to be broken up into two sections. We're going to do uh, work plans and checklists first. And then in the second week, we're going to finish up the pro other process tools. So here I'm going to be talking about um, the basics of how to document a process well. 
Um, but then I'm also going to be um, discussing, you know, technically how to do that in Touchstone. So at this point in the webinar series, if you have employees that you want them to be learning how to document, this is a, a good time to have them maybe come on to the webinar and, and learn about that. Because we're, this is primarily going to be just about how to document using the process tools and how to do that well. So um, your employees are welcome to come and listen on. Um, any questions? I've got about five or six questions that are kind of unrelated to what we're talking about here, so I'm going to answer those um, offline. I'll send people emails. Um, but before I let you go, any more questions about using of the job descriptions? Someone's just commenting that this is, that it's a whole new way to manage, is essentially what they're saying. And, and yes, that's true. It is. It's a whole new way to manage. Um, but it's an effective way. And most businesses out there, if you ask them how they manage, they can't really articulate that. Each manager does it differently. So this is, uh, gives management a purpose. Um, it gives you a structure, a method for management, and that can be that can be just invaluable in a business. So even though it may sound overwhelming and maybe like a whole new way, now's the time to do it. Um, as you build your org chart, as you build your job descriptions, if you have managers in place now, sit with your managers and come together as a team and build a consistent philosophy and teach how to manage with job descriptions. 